This OSCE video will guide you through what you should be looking for on a gastrointestinal examination in an OSCE scenario, followed by a full run through of what it should look like. Candidate instructions. Please examine this patient's gastrointestinal system and present your findings in six minutes. On introduction, you should introduce yourself and role, wash your hands, check the patient ID, explain what you are going to do, and ask for a chaperone. Look for bedside clues, such as any medications, oxygen, or stool sample. Look at the patient's consciousness level, his appearance, if he is short of breath, or in any visible pain. Assess for pain. In the hands, you should be assessing the temperature, the colour, for coilonychia, leukonychia, capillary refill, clubbing, palmar erythema, anemia, dupuytens contracture, tendon xanthoma, or spider nevi. In the arms, you should assess for a radial pulse, also the respiratory rate, and a blood pressure in both arms. At the neck, you should identify and measure the jugular venous pressure and assess the character and volume of the carotid pulse. You should look at the general appearance of the face, look in the eyes for any anemia, jaundice, corneal arcus, chylofleischer rings, xanthalasma, and in the mouth for any central cyanosis, for hydration, aphthous ulcers, a furry tongue, the state of the dentition, and also assess for a uremic fetal. Expose the patient from nipples to knees and lie them flat and assess for gynecomastia in men, spider nevi, distension, swelling or masses, any asymmetry, caput medusa, stria gravidarum or any visible scars. Perform light and deep palpation in the right iliac fossa, right lumbar, right hypochondrium, epigastrium, umbilicus, Superpubic, left iliac fossa, left lumbar, and left hypochondrium, looking for any guarding or rebound tenderness or any masses that may be palpable. Palpate for specific organs, including the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, the bladder, and also palpate for the abdominal aorta. Percuss the abdomen in all nine regions systematically and percuss for the liver, the spleen and the bladder. If you suspect ascites, percuss for shifting dullness. Auscultate the abdomen, listening for any bowel sounds and auscultate for any abdominal, renal, hepatic or splenic bruise. Examine the lymph nodes, including segmental, submandibular, preauricular, deep cervical, posterior cervical, postauricular, occipital, but especially supracavicular or vercosc. End your examination by thanking the patient, summarising your findings. Perform a hernia and rectal examination, a genital examination. Request a stool sample and urine analysis and if female, perform a pregnancy test.
Hi, my name's Alec. I'm a third year medical student. Can I just check your name and date of birth? Yes, it's John Smith, and I was born on the 3rd of the 11th, 87. Okay. Well, I've just been asked to do an examination of your GI system. What that's going to involve is having a look and a feel of your hands and your face, ask you to expose your abdomen, and having a quick feel and a listen. Is that okay? That's fine. I would get a chaperone at this point. Now start by looking around the bed for any signs of bedside clues, such as any oxygen, any medications, or any stool samples. Looking at the patient, checking to see if he's conscious, if he's not short of breath, if he's in any obvious pain, or if there's any jaundice or pallor in the face, which there's not. So, are you in any pain at all, sir? No. So I'm going to start by looking at the hands, feeling for the temperature, checking they're not cold or clammy, which they're not, and looking to see if they're well perfused, which they are. Moving on to the nails, looking for any coilonychia from iron deficiency anemia, any leukonychia from low albumin, checking capillary refill, pressing for five seconds, and the blood should return it in two, which it does. Also checking for clubbing, so can I ask you to pop your fingers like that? Looking for the diamond shape, which if obliterated might indicate IBD or liver pathology. Turning over, looking at the palms for any signs of palm erythema, in the creases for any signs of anemia, and also feeling for any duperturns contracture from liver pathology. Looking at the back of the hands for any tendon xanthoma, and then also looking for any signs of spider nevi, which is not. And that's fine. So if I can just ask you to pop your hands out like this, and cock your wrists back, and close your eyes, looking for any evidence of liver flap from hepatic encephalopathy. Um, ideally, I'd do this for a minute. And that's fine, you can pop your hands down. Now I'd like to check a pulse. Ideally, I'd do this for up to a minute, but for the purpose of today, I'll do it for 15 seconds. And the pulse is 64, the rhythm is regular, and the respiratory rate is 12. Moving up the arm, I would do a blood pressure. I'm just going to check at the neck for a JVP. So if I can ask the patient to lean up. Patient at 45 degrees and head tilted away. I'm looking for a double pulsation within the neck, which if raised might in indicate hepatomegaly, and that's fine. Checking at the carotids for the pulse. Checking character and volume, which is normal. And you can lean back now. That's fine. Looking at the face for any evidence of pallor or jaundice. Looking in the eyes for any signs of corneal arcus, jaundice or anemia, or chylofleischer rings from Wilson's disease. Also looking around the eyes for any xanthelasma. If you can open your mouth for me and stick the tongue to the roof of your mouth. Looking for evidence of central cyanosis, dentition, any aphthous ulcers. And can you stick your tongue out? Looking for any furring of the tongue. And also smelling for any uremic food. That's fine. So if I could ask you to just take your gown off for me. Ideally, I'd expose the patient from nipples to knees, the patient lying as flat as possible, hands by the side. So looking at the chest, looking for any evidence of gynecomastia or any spider nevi, onto the abdomen for any swellings, masses or distension, any asymmetry in the abdominal wall. Looking for any scars, such as any appendectomy scars, any midline scars or laparotomy scars, and also looking for any signs of capot medusa from portal hypertension or stria gravidarum from distension, none of which are present. So I'm going to move on to palpation. So I'm going to start by palpating in the right iliac fossa, right lumbar, right hypochondrium, epigastrium, umbilicus, suprapubic, left iliac fossa, left lumbar, and left hypochondrium. Looking at the patient for any pain. Now I'm going to do deep palpation, feeling for any masses or any other abnormalities that might be detected. And there's nothing palpable there, so that's fine. Now I'd like to palpate for specific organs. So if you could take a few deep breaths in and out for me. Feeling for the liver edge, for any hepatomegaly. That's fine. I'm feeling for the spleen. Checking for the kidneys. Keep deep in and out for me. And then feeling for the bladder. Do you need to pee at all? which is normally non-palpable, and that's fine. If I suspected organomagaly, I'd like to percuss. Spleen. And bladder. And that's fine. If there was any distension, I'd like to check for shifting dullness. So, just tapping along from the umbilicus. If I hear the sound change, ask the patient to roll towards me. Wait for 30 seconds and then percuss again, listening for the change of sound. And that's fine, you can roll back. I would like to have a quick listen in, listening for bowel sounds. Ideally, I'd do this for up to a minute. 
listening for any tinkling or absent bell sounds. Moving on, I check for the aortic breweries, any renal breweries, or any hepatic or splenic breweries. Also, feel for any signs of AAA. The aorta should be expansive, uh, pulsatile but not expansive, and that's fine. So, if you can sit up for me, I'd just like to have a quick feel of your neck. So, feeling for any lymphadenopathy in submental. So mandibular, preauricular, deep cervical, supracurricular, especially vercovs, posterior cervical, postauricular, and occipital. And that's fine, you can lie back now. And if you can cover yourself up, that's great. On examination of this patient's GI system, everything is normal. However, if I did suspect anything and was indicated, I would send a stool sample, do a rectal exam, a urine analysis, in a male do a hernia and genital exam, and in a female do a PB and a pregnancy test. Thank you very much.